What's going on guys, Nick here for another Cinema 4D tutorial and today I have been asked to kind of, to kind of break down and somewhat explain um, this video with Ferronary Fracture inside Cinema 4D. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. So there's a bridge and it's uh, collapsing. Uh, this video was made by MBG Core. So that was made in Redshift, I believe, it's just the render engine. So there's lots of stuff going on. You can see all the, the it looks like MoGraph effectors. Um, so I attempted to go ahead and figure out how this is done. So I did it in a little bit of a different way because I couldn't fully figure out how you do it with MoGraph effectors. But I made a quick little bridge, super fast, and... Um, I went ahead and I made this little animation of my somewhat bridge falling apart. Uh, there's a big chunk that falls off and then there's a small chunk that falls off for the side over here. So this is, um, it's pretty easy and I'll show you how to do it. Not too much here, I just got the Veronai fracture with the bridge. Um, I'll hop in here, I'll make a new file and we'll just keep this simple. I'm just going to grab a cube. I'm going to stretch it out, make it a little bit wider, so we have we have our cube here, like so. Alrighty. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to come under MoGraph and grab a Veronae Fracture, and we're just going to drop our cube in there. And now we have to figure out, um, obviously when you're rendering, um, a bridge collapsing you need tons and tons of particles but my computer would probably explode if I tried to actually put the proper amount of particles I would need so I'm just gonna come into source under the Veronoi fracture click on the point generator and I'm just gonna up this to about 500 for the tutorial so now we can see we got a uh, somewhat of a variation of points here we can crank that up even more uh, higher you crank this up the better your computers need it gonna be to process all the movements for it but I'll show you what I did here so let's just say this is uh, our bridge that we have the next thing that we're gonna want to do there's a couple things here um, we're gonna want to put a simulation tag for a rigid body on our Voronoi fracture and this is where um, the kind of like the magic happens because if I press play right now the whole thing is just gonna fall and that's not what we want so if we come into the dynamics body tag and we go uh, to trigger if we set this on collision so now what this is gonna do is nothing's gonna happen until something else hits it alright so we got a bridge we got the dynamics tag uh, set you can um, make this so the where is it here the collision you can make it so the frictions a bit higher so it slows down the um, falling you can mess around with all that to uh, get your the look that you want obviously I'm not an expert in Verona fracture or dynamics body tags um, I know a bit and I'm gonna try to teach you what I know but We'll uh, keep on moving. All right, so now that we got our bridge, when I press play, it stays still. That's exactly what we want. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another object. So inside, when we were watching the other video, uh, I'm just gonna put this to, to 50 for now. So when we were watching this video, um, you can see they have all of these, uh, what looks like MoGraph effectors and it says they are random effectors, but I don't know exactly how they're used um, to trigger the Verona fracture. So instead of using um, effectors, what I was doing is I was using other objects. So I'm going to put a collider body tag on our sphere. So now when I press play, it's not going to move, but we can animate the sphere. So I'm just going to say I want this sphere to come and uh, break the edge of this bridge here. So line it up, press play, 
and we'll just drop this down into it and we'll press play again and now it's gonna hit our bridge and it's gonna trigger the rigid body colliders so this is great now it seems a little uh, fake in a way still and there's one step further that we can do to add some uh, realistic stuff, uh, realistic kind of uh, sturdiness to this bridge, because obviously it would, uh, it's got rebar in there, it's got concrete, it's got all that stuff. So if we come to connectors and create fixed connector, so that's going to kind of connect all these objects together with a breaking point. So if we come into the connector, that says breaking force and breaking torque. So this is how much force and torque inside the program you're going to need to push on this to break it. So now when we click the animation, it's much slower, but it's got more of a grab. As you can see, the pieces hold together because there's not, um, it's not strong enough to break it. So what we can do is if we lower this down to uh, 20,000 for each, like so, and we go ahead and replay the same scene, uh, you're going to know it falls apart a little bit more. So if we lower this down to 10,000 and 10,000, uh, a little bit more should break every time we change our value. So that's how that can be used. Um, it's also how fast the animation's coming in. So if I crank these, these two points together and make it a really hard hit, then um, you'll get more of this this bounce so sometimes it's not too bad to um, just make it push right into it and it falls apart like that also we can when you use uh, larger flatter objects you can create larger pieces falling because right now with this sphere it kind of shatters it into uh, multiple different particles pieces of the Voronoi fracture but since we added this connector um, pieces that are falling can fall together as one piece because they still think, okay, nothing's hit me. I'm, I haven't broken yet. So if, I'm just going to control drag our dynamics tag that was on our uh, sphere to this cube. And we'll go ahead and we'll make another quick little animation here. We'll push that into the bridge. So look at the difference between this one where it hits and it kind of breaks into these different forces whereas this one hits and um, some of them well lots of them fell apart there but I'll maybe try to move this in a little bit to see if uh, see if I can show you and if not then I can just there we go go down. If it doesn't work here I can show you in my other file. <clears throat> okay, it's not working so much here but if we go back into this one I believe there was a section that it was working. So this piece falls as one right here. Right there. It falls as one because there's nothing that is let it known that you can break apart now. So that's what I was talking about, about larger, flatter pieces when they hit, sometimes they stay together. But yeah, so this is pretty much the breakdown, uh, or at least the, the bare minimum um, that you can do to kind of get this effect of uh, a bridge falling apart. You can also, once you got these animated, you can go ahead and hide them just by uh, clicking the red dots so that you don't see it triggering the animation and it kind of just look like the bridge is falling apart on its own but yeah so hopefully that answers your question it was Yaya Ria 82 I don't know how exactly how you pronounce it but he asked if I could show you the bare minimum of that um, I will try to find out how to use MoGraph vectors to trigger animations um, I know there is a slot here for effectors which work but in the way that you think so because if I drop a random effector in here it just randomizes the entire thing <clears throat> but in the dynamics tag 
of some of these. I think so, at least. Let's see. S is MoGraph selection. So you can do something there. I haven't figured it out yet. But hopefully this answers your question for now on how to kind of create um, bridges or buildings collapsing in certain sections. Hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you liked the video. And I'll talk to you guys all next time. See ya.